Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is an NPC bodybuilder. Today's guest is Austin Connolly. Austin, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, buddy. For sure, my man. So Austin, the first question uh, I've got for you is, who are a few of your favorite bodybuilders of all time? Right now, it had to be number one, Flex Lewis. And the reason I say that is I've met him in person. He's a super humble guy. Um, he waits his, and if his lines are all the way to the end of the bus, it don't matter. He's going to sit there and talk to each one of you. I've got several pictures with him. Uh, he's just a man. The way he trains is smart. It's not the way I train, but I like his style. He's, he's in it for the long haul. I think he's going to, you know, break some necks and somebody's going to see what he's coming for this coming year. I'm ready to see what he's going to look like. Uh, as far as open bodybuilders, I hate that it, it ended the way it did. I wanted to see Phil Heath come back and, um, uh, you know, I know he's got business things in mind. He's thinking health. Uh, Phil, he's probably by far my favorite bodybuilder besides Flex. Uh, I like the structure. I like the way he talked, the way he held himself. Some people didn't like him. Thought he might have been a little bit too cocky. I see that. But as far as bodybuilding-wise, I mean, I thought he had the prettiest shape. Um, he was really bubbly. I get it a lot that I've, I'm a bubbly guy. So, you know, that, that comes hand in hand. But I just – Physique-wise, Phil Heath was by far the my favorite physique. You know, he had it all. He had he was conditioned, the structure, the shape, uh, again the bubbliness. It was all there, and he held himself to a, as a champion should. So that's probably my second favorite. Very cool, man. Love that. All right, so tell us, Austin, at what age you started lifting weights, and then why did you start lifting weights at that age? I started back in middle school. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a funny story. Uh, I started around 14 years old. Uh, my family, all of them worked out. I had a couple that were bodybuilding stuff. My dad just worked out. He loved training. Uh, I never really got into it until I found that one day my, I, my, I was working at my dad's body shop. And I was, again, I was 13, 14 years old at the time. I'd take the trash out, sweep the floors. It was a body shop, you know, so I wasn't no body man, but I could clean up. And I went to, uh, to go to this new dumpster we had and dump the trash and I couldn't open the lid. And I was sitting out there fighting. And this was on top of the dumpster. So I'm sitting there and I'm short. I can't get up there and get to it. And I called my dad out there. I said, Dad, I said, I think something's wrong with this new dumpster we got. I can't get the lid open. He said, what do you mean, son? I said, well, I'm up there. And I'm, on, I'm literally on top of the dumpster trying to open the other lid. And he gets up and he just pushes the lid over. He said, are you serious? I said, oh, okay. He said, well, you're about to start working out. And from that point on, I never stopped. I literally took uh, one week off my whole life since I was 14 years old. And that's when I married my wife, Alyssa Conlon. And uh, so it all started then. It was it was just working out. I had no clue about bodybuilding. Like I said, my uncle did it, but I didn't see it at 14. It was like, oh, he bodybuilds you. I didn't see it like that. I walked in the gym, which was Fitness Zone at the time, and I seen this big Super Bowl poster. It was like a Super Bowl ring on it, Panhandle Showdown in Pensacola, Florida. And I asked my dad, I said, hey, dad, I said, can I do this? And uh, he said, yeah, sure. I asked your Uncle Johnny to help you. And it just, man, it's went from there. And I fell in love with the sport. Very cool. So um, I'm kind of curious, Austin, how did uh, you said your dad kind of lifted weights? He didn't necessarily yeah. bodybuild, but um, you said your, your uncle, maybe another family member competed in That's bodybuilding. Right. Do you kind of know how your dad and then some of your uncles got into bodybuilding? How, what's the story behind that? Uh, well, my dad was in mixed martial arts. I think just from that and just working out as a young, young guy, he was, uh, you know, my dad grew up in, in a shop as well as a mechanic. And uh, that was kind of his thing. His dad pushed him to work, work hard and everything he did, he did to the fullest. So I think mixed martial arts kind of helped with that, but all his older friends and stuff worked out. So they probably started around my age, 14 or 15. Uh, my uncle Johnny, he's actually a, a NPC judge. He started bodybuilding after he got out of the Navy. And it's just something that he loves to do. Uh, he still does. He still wants to do one more show. He's getting up in the age. But, uh, yeah, so they all started around in their their teens into the early 20s. Uh, my mom, she works out. My wife, like I said, she's an IFBB pro bikini competitor. So everybody in my family works out or competes. So it's my support system has been tremendous. Uh, I met a best friend of mine, which is actually a business partner, Billy Perkins. We're actually opening our own gym. And he was working out at one time. And I guess three years ago, we, we linked up. Well, me and him has been training partners since, became best friends, and again, business partners. Now we're opening our own gym. So everybody around me either works out, competes, owns their own business. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a good environment to be around. 
and the support system is by far more than I could ever have dreamed of. I mean, that's, that's why I love bodybuilding. Cool, man. Love it. And I'm excited to get a little bit more into your bodybuilding uh, story here, but before we do that, Austin, tell me uh, a little bit about like where you grew up, talk about a little bit more of your family dynamics, talk about any sports or anything kind of extracurricular that you did when you were in school. Talk about, did you like school? Did you not like school? Paint that picture uh, for us in terms of childhood up to about yeah. high school, and then we'll move on from there. Okay. So like I said, I did start working out in eighth grade. Uh, never played sports all the way up until my senior year. I started playing football. I lost my dad at a young age. I lost him in about 11th grade. I was 17 at the time. Uh, so everything I knew as far as working out grew from my dad and my uncle Johnny, who's a chiropractor, the NPC judge, uh, and my other uncle, which is my uncle Bruce. So working out is really all I had. So from the time from eighth grade to 10th grade, uh, I worked at my dad's shop. We owned a body shop and a speed shop and was open a machine shop. So from that time on, I worked with him up until, like I said, about 10th, I think it was 11th grade, 11th grade, I lost my dad. So at that point, all I knew was working out, and that's the only place that I could clear my mind. It's still some the only place that you know I enjoy just when I go to the gym, it's put my headphones in or crank the music up, and it's just my time. Uh, so from that point on, I, I left. I went went to work um, in North Carolina and Virginia over that time period. I actually I'm living in Mississippi and I was born and raised in Mississippi, past school in Mississippi. Uh, but I went out and work out of town in North Carolina and Virginia throughout my junior and my senior year, just to make some extra money, you know, bring to the household, help my mom out and stuff, buy my own things that I needed for college. So from that point on, uh, my senior year came around and we got a new coach at, at the high school that I was at. They wanted me to play football. I was, I was kind of a smaller kid all the way through middle school. So I started working out. I graduated like 2.30. So I was more of a, and I'm only 5'9", so I was kind of a bigger kid for high school. So I played linebacker, fullback, defense in, in high school. And never dreamed. It was kind of one of those things that I didn't know much of about football as I did like bodybuilding either until I actually started it. Right. So when I started playing football, I didn't know a lot of positions. I didn't know routes. I just knew whoever had the ball, I had to take their head off. And that's what I did. So that was fun. Uh, we got a junior college here in Perkston, Mississippi, one of the best JUCO uh, schools in the Mississippi region. And um, I walked on, I tried out and they wanted me to come play. It just wasn't for me. I was away from my family. Me and my family's real close niche. Even though it was only an hour away, it just – I didn't feel like that was what I wanted to do, was play football. It was just something – everybody that I was playing with, they've done it all since elementary school, and that's all they knew, right? So that wasn't me. All I wanted to do was work out. You know, I got the chance to put pads on and, you know, run people over and stuff. But at the same time, I realized it's not all – when it comes to football, it wasn't just how strong you was. It was technique. It was how smart you were on the field football smarts and I just didn't that wasn't me you know I was competitive but that just wasn't me so I came back home after a year of college I still at the time didn't know what I wanted to do uh, my uncle Bruce he works in a chemical uh, refinery at the time my senior year and he said man why don't you try this program that Chevron refinery puts on us in an operations field so we're a big oil field company down here Louisiana the same way that chemical fields oil field so they have a bunch of refineries and chemical plants so I said, you know what, I'll give it a shot. It's a good paying job. It's good benefits. It's good insurance. So I came back down here. Luckily, we had a college right across uh, the bridge in, in another city of Gauche, which is like 15 minutes from where I live. So I started doing that, uh, got into the college, done, done what I had to do, get my two years, got my degree, started into the old business or chemical plan is where I started first. And now me and my, actually the same uncle that I'm talking about, we're both now at the Chevron Refinery in Pasco, Mississippi. Uh, our shift works a little hard. Uh, it's not the best for a bodybuilder because it's actually a swing shift. So it's basically you work seven days, you're off seven, and then you work seven nights. And it's a 12-hour shift. There's a lot of overtime in between. So it's constantly days, nights, days, nights, days, nights. So it's not, it's not the best for bodybuilding. And when I started this career, there was a lot of doubters. Oh, you can't do it because you're going to be working 12-hour shifts. You're going to be working nights. You're going to be getting up early. Get... I love bodybuilding. I love working out. It's not going to stop me. I have no kids now. But even when I do, like I said, I have a great support system. If I have one or two kids with my wife, I'll still bodybuild. This is what I love to do, and this is what I'm going to do. So that brings me to where I am now. Uh, like I said, I, I'm in a refinery. I'm working as an operator. been an operator for seven or eight years now. First, it was a chemical plant. Now it's a refinery, an oil refinery. Uh, 
And as far as business outside of that, like I said, a best friend of mine, business partner, Billy Perkins, we're opening our own gym in Mississippi. Uh, down here on the coast, there's not a whole lot of hardcore gyms. We don't want it to, we don't want it as such as a hardcore gym, but we want a gym that people enjoy working out. It don't have to be a bodybuilder, power lifter gym, but we do want a gym that everybody comes there, enjoys it and motivates each other. Uh, we will have aerobics classes and stuff like that. But, you know, that was always my goal. Like my whole family on my dad's side, they own their own business. And I, I missed out on that when I lost my dad. M my plans was to work with my dad and, and do what he wanted me to do as, as far as body shop goes and speed shop, machine shop, just learn that aspect, learn that career. And that's what I was going to do. But I missed out on that. So it kind of it kind of sucked um, in a way when I lost that, but it motivated me more than anything to, okay, now my dad's in heaven. Now I have to, he's, he's my angel. So I gotta, I gotta do everything I can to make him happy just like he was here. And that's why I went to the career that I did. And it's put me in a position where I can now own my own business. And uh, that's, that's huge for me. Uh, like I said, I missed out on learning the career that he, he started with his dad, uh, but that's okay. I got my own career. This is my passion. And that was his passion. My passion's helping others motivate other people, get them healthy or get them on a stage or whatever, or just enjoy the gym as well as I do. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very touching for me to own my own business, but also own my own business is something that I love to do. That's going to help other people. Very so. cool. Now I want to, I want to take a step back, Austin. And if you don't mind kind of sharing this with us, um, it seems like your dad had a huge impact on you yeah. in your childhood, right? So, yes. um, you know, when he passed away at, at a very young age and you were, you were very young, um, would you just mind just talking a little bit about what that was like for you emotionally being 17 Ooh. years old and, yeah. and, and how, how did that kind of hurt you and how did, how, how did that, uh, how did you kind of deal with it then? And how have you been able to deal with it over the, the years now as a, as an adult yourself? Well, you know, going back to my daddy dying, it was a it was a very painful thing. It still is. Um, I think about it all the time. My family, like I said, we got a close knit family, so it hurt. He was like the glue in between everybody. He kept everybody together, and that glue's gone now. And it's still, it, we're still close knit because of that. Because we know at any time and day we can one of us can be gone. You know, and he, everybody knows that. Uh, but I was there when I lost my dad. It was it was a wrongful death. Um, and I hate bringing it up because I hate politics and everything that's on the internet, but it was a wrongful death on the police. Um, we got into altercation with two guys. We're at Waffle House, which we ate breakfast every morning together. We got into a little altercation with some guys and it was raining like cat and dogs. And we have Waffle House. The Waffle House is just like a, a Denny's for people up north. So basically Waffle House, we go there every morning, get breakfast before we'd go to the shop. We had a little altercation with some guys and it, it all, this altercation was nothing crazy. It was just a few words were spread. We got into a little fist fight altercation. The fight went outside. The other guys stayed inside. Police officers came. And at Wolf House, they had this overhang so you could walk in Wolf House and not get wet, of course. And at the time, like I said, it was raining cats and dogs. And something happened to my dad where I don't know if he got so worked up between what happened. My dad, like I said, he, he worked out. He trained. He stayed healthy. He never drank. He never smoked. None of that. Um, so he was a healthy guy, you know, he was in shape, but I don't know if it was just, and nobody knows, they can't tell us what happened. Um, even when they did the biopsy, they didn't know what happened, but he basically just passed out. When he did, he fell back and hit his head right in between my feet. We're both handcuffed. I was 16 at the time, 17 at the time. So he fell right in between my, right in between my feet. And my dad was a, I mean, he went through mixed martial arts. He did boxing and all that. I've never seen my dad knocked out. I've never seen pass out in front of me. So at the time, I don't know what's going on. He falls in between my, my feet. And it's, like I said, it's raining like cat and dogs and the water's actually going into his mouth and drowning him. The guy that we got into an altercation with was a firefighter and like, hey, you got to get him up. You got to get him up. He's on the inside, point through the window. You got to get him up. Well, there was a lady, she was EMT off duty. And uh, she was telling the police officer, you got to get him up. And at the time I was only 145 pounds, but that was like 240 at the time, five foot six. So he's a big, solid guy. He's got handcuffs, and I'm trying to get my dad, like, wake him up or move him. Well, that time, there was a rookie cop being trained by a senior cop, and basically they threw me in the cop car. They left my dad there for 15 minutes. So basically 15 minutes, he drowned to death. Uh, the firefighters got there. They tried to pick him up, put him on his knees. He fell right back on his face. 
as soon as the firefighters got the handcuffs off and started giving CPR, he never came back. They rushed him to the hospital. They said, if you would have got him here within 20 minutes ago, we probably could have brought him back. And that's how I lost my dad. Um, and that was, man, I, I was in a black spot for about two years. I didn't like go off and do drugs or anything like that. I was just, I didn't know what I needed to do. Um, I wasn't bodybuilding at the time. I, I wanted to do a show. And the only show that I did with my, my, me and my dad were supposed to compete together. Like he's the one that kind of, he had talked about doing a show and I was like, okay, I'll do a show with you. You know, this was, I was 14 at the time. So we were getting ready for a show, but business got crazy busy and he never got to do it. So I ended up doing the show and this was the Panhandle Showdown in Pensacola. So he got to see me do that. My family got to see me do that. My friends got to see me. And I've never seen my dad tear up at all. When I got off that stage after winning that teen show in Pensacola, he was literally almost in tears. And I'll never, I watch the video all the time of hearing my dad hit him with a crab or screaming, get him Austin, you know, just whatever he was saying. I, I can still, I can still hear his voice. I still watch the video and I listen because that's all I got, you know, and that's why I started bodybuilding. Not only do, do I get, did I get to share that with him? I, I get to share it now with my future family, my family that is now my wife's side of the family. Her mom supports us. She is like show mom. Number one, for sure. She's at all the shows. She has everything planned out. Okay, you got to get your tan at this time. The the Air and B's here. You know, she's got a, she literally has a folder of everything from everything we got to do from the time we get there to the time we leave. And then all my job is do is make sure I'm shaved, make sure I'm at my tan, make sure I get the show, make sure I give it all my all, and make sure I have a list of where we're eating after the show. So it's just... I don't know, man. Bodybuilding's, you know, we never had like a big family reunion. We had Thanksgiving, we had Christmas, but this is my family reunion. When I do my shows, I have everybody there, support system. My business partner, he actually competes. He just did North Americans two years ago. So it's like anytime we're at shows, we're there together. And it's it means the world to me. Very cool. So um, before we kind of get a little bit further into your bodybuilding, I want to talk about the gym that you and your business partner are opening um, why don't you just talk a little bit more um, about that, kind of like what your guys' vision is, what your goal is with the gym, what the name of it is going to be, if you know what that is, when it's going to open. Just kind of give us a little bit more of the details about that, Austin, please. Okay. So we started this about two years ago. Um, again, my, my goal was to always own my own business. Billy, he owns a successful uh, player's entire business. So he had that aspect of knowing how to run a business him and his dad has a successful uh tire and players business down here in mississippi so about two years ago we was talking about you know getting a gym together and billy's putting his two daughters through school right now so we're like okay when they get through with school you know we can start our own business well something happened and we just said you know what we're gonna do it we're gonna do it and this is actually when covid first hit two years ago the first year we were we went to, he has an old shop that him and his dad started actually across the street from their new building now. And uh, we were trying other gyms out and going to, you know, there's a few down here on the coast that we went to. And he was like, man, he said, I think we can open our own business in my old shop. And I said, well, yeah. I mean, I knew it was a five-day shop, but I was like, yeah, we can do that. So we go into the shop and in my mind, I, I couldn't remember exactly how bad it was as because it was, it was a tire business, you know, but it's a metal frame shop. So we go there the next day and we're looking. I'm like, man, Billy, I think we can do it. But it's going to take a lot of work. This is a lot of demo work. I mean, we're talking concrete floors. We still have five bay doors lined up on the outside. We got to put new metal in it. We got to, I mean, we redid these, this whole shop. I mean, from the outside to the inside and it's, it's immaculate. Now we're, we should be open in four weeks. The name of the gym is going to be Mississippi Muscle. Um, and like I said, the, our vision of this is just to, to be a destination in Mississippi. You know, Destination Dallas has a destination in Dallas. We want a destination in Mississippi. We want our own gym that people come in. They have a good feeling when they come in. We'll have a smoothie bar. We'll sell loaded teas. We'll actually have little foods as you grab and go, some healthy, uh, either whether a fruit bowl or something. We're work, going to work with a lady here that does little health food bowls just for people, quick meals to grab. Uh, as far as being cleanless, it has to be clean. We got all brand new stuff in there. Uh, for, as far as the bathroom goes, showers and stuff like that, you know, we'll have a, a company come in and clean the gym once a week or every other week. Uh, and then once you get into the gym, we went with all Arsenal equipment. We pretty much bought every Arsenal piece you could buy. 
Uh, and the reason we did that is we knew that we wanted something. If we're going to do it, we're going to go all in. That's just the mindset we had. You know, we know it's going to be expensive. If we can do it smart, then we can pay for this gym and, and have a good place to train and everybody else can too. There's not a gym on the coast that has arsenal equipment. So this is going to be new for people down here, and I'm excited for them to see it. We've let a few people come in and train it. And they're like, oh, my God, because they're used to just hand-me-down stuff. Or we have a gym down here like Planet Fitness, uh, which is just, you know, it's not, it's not your type of gym you want to train at. But there's not a gym down here that has arsenal equipment. There's not a gym down here that, don't, that has any good equipment. There's one gym in Biloxi that has some hammer strength. It has a great atmosphere, but it's about 45 minutes from us. So the region that we're trying to hit and the little towns that's in between us, I mean, it's going to be something special. And we want people to enjoy working out, enjoy being around each other that want to train, whether it's, you know, as far as competition or just health reasons or just love to train, you know. And it's, it's just want it to be an all-around awesome place to come and you enjoy it when you come there. So cool, that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, no, that, that sounds awesome, especially with uh, Arsenal Strength. Uh, uh, the founder of Arsenal Strength has actually been on the podcast, really humble, awesome dude. Yeah. So um, now is the goal then, Austin, once the gym kind of gets up and, and, and moving and grooving, are you going to step away from the, the uh, refinery stuff or are you going to try to do both? What, what does that look like? Man, I, I wish I could tell you, uh, the refinery where I'm at now is, is literally, as far as career-wise in that industry, is the best job to have on the coast. So it's hard to walk away from. Uh, they have good insurance. They have a great retirement plan, which as far as 401k pension goes, the pay is great. They got good bonuses. It, it's going to be hard to do that. I love bodybuilding, and I, and, I, and I really do love having this gym. I will once it's open, you know. That, that's been a goal of mine, but I've always had, you, you got to set goals, but realistically goals, you always got to have a backup plan. And I think that's, that's where my mind's a little different. You know, I own my own house with my wife, you know, we got a family as far as a, a dog goes, we don't have kids yet, but you know, I got to have a career. I got, and she has a great career. She's a nurse at the hospital. So it's going to be hard for me to walk away. She wants me to do it. Uh, I got a great sports system team. If I can do how I want to do this year and the next couple of years, as far as bodybuilding goes. And that's, that's the route I'd like to take, but it's hard to leave a good career knowing, you know, this is, this is a career, you know, so insurance benefits, good pay. It's going to be hard for me to do that. If I can juggle everything, I'll juggle it all. And I'll, and I'll move forward as, as I am doing now. So. Cool, man. All right. So let's, uh, let's start uh, getting into the bodybuilding talk a little bit more in depth. So you competed as a teenager, why don't you just talk about that first show a little bit more? Um, did you like absolutely love being on the stage and really enjoy oh, yeah. it? And then why don't you just start unpacking your competition history uh, for us, please, Austin? Okay. So, yeah, I started at Pensacola. Like I said, it wasn't as for bodybuilding re reasons, really. At the time, I didn't know much. I wanted that ring. I seen that Super Bowl ring. I was like, I want this. And, of course, you know, once I did it and I prepped for it, I had my Uncle Johnny, who I talked about, the uh, NPC judge, he helped me with my prep for that first show, and I absolutely loved it. I had my family in the crowd, friends screaming my name, you know, me showing out on stage, and I knew I loved being on the stage. You know, I love working out, but I love being on the stage. I just – I like performing in front of people. I like showing who I am on stage. You know, it's, it's, it's a great feeling. I mean, there's nothing – there's nothing better. I mean, being on the field, being in front of, you know, hundreds of fans at high school and, you know, having fun with that, it's still that that adrenaline that you get on stage as far as a routine goes is awesome. Now, when it comes to the comparisons, I like to compete. You know, I, I work my butt off in the gym. I lift heavy weights. I've just got through eating my third meal. Like, I put in all the work that I need to. So when I get on stage, it's, it's kind of personal for me. I love having fun with the guys on stage. I really do. You know, we cut up up there. My favorite memories from Nationals last year with Ross Flanagan that owns uh, Gang Sauces. I mean, we had a great time up there. And, you know, I enjoy that. But at the same time, I want to win. I hadn't won my pro card yet. It's coming. I know it is. But I like to compete. So when we're up there, it's either, you know, we're talking trash to each other, having fun with it as respect as we should. But I love being on the stage. I really do. So once I left Pensacola, I did another show in Alabama, the Steel World, which is a local show here. Uh, I won Pensacola as a team, and I think I placed second. And um, at the next show a few weeks ago, 
of course, I was all natural at the time, you know, competing with people that's 18 and that's started some stuff. It was hard to compete. But as far as structure goes, even at 145 pounds, because that was my first show weight was 100. I'm sorry, 147 to be exact. Uh, I still had good structure and still, you know, lean, of course, at 147 pounds at five foot eight. Um, so from that point on, uh, I competed again in Pensacola. I'm trying to think when it was, Quentin. Um, I think I took some time off after Pensacola. And actually, I got the shows written down on my phone. It was like 2017, me and my wife did Junior USA's, and I got third in that competition. Uh, I was a light heavy at that time. <clears throat> and in 2018, I went to Junior Nationals. I won the heavyweight division at that, and then I got fourth in USA's a few weeks after that. And that was a pretty cool moment for me because uh, Matt Jansen is my coach now. And Matt was actually doing USA's, and I think Matt got third that year. I either got fourth or fifth, and I think he got third that year. So we got to share the stage, and that was the first time I got talking to Matt. And every show that I went to, I always talked to Matt. We talked on Instagram. Super nice guy. Uh, and that was one of the reasons that I swapped over, and we could talk about that in a little bit. But after that show, after USA's, I did North Americans in 2013. We actually dropped down to a light heavy. Um, we knew it was afterwards. We knew at the time I was working with AJ Sims in 2017 and 18. And in 2019, I was still with AJ Sims as well. And I don't know, something happened at the end of that prep about four to six weeks out. And uh, my weight was just falling off. Uh, I'd never gotten back down to that light heavy the previous year because I was a heavyweight before. But I asked my man, I said, you know, we'll have two days to carve up. And my body, I don't, it don't take much for me to stay full. I don't, I'm not a big eater when it comes to our big carb up guys that when we, once we hit peak week, it don't take a lot to fill me out. Um, so we wasn't too much worried about that, but I went and once we got to Pittsburgh, we had, I got there about three or four days early. And I think he said, if your weight's at like, I think it was like 215 or 212, we'll try to suck down. We'll get the sauna. We can drop that weight if you want to. He was like, man, you'd be a huge light heavy, and I think this would be a good opportunity for you to win your pro card. Well, you know, me and my mind said, whatever my coach thinks, I'm with it. If you think you can bring me in right, we'll do it. If you think that's going to – if we can put me in a good position to win, um, I probably shouldn't have done that. I went to the sauna that two days before, and I was in there for about two and a half hours, and I dropped about 15 or 16 pounds, and that was miserable. I was in a sauna suit. I was constantly getting out, trying to go to the bathroom getting in a cold shower, putting the sauna suit back on. It was two and a half hours of hell. And uh, I finally hit the weight that I needed to be, which was 197 to make that light heavy. And, uh, I mean, I remember FaceTiming after, and he was like, holy crap, my face was just sunk in more than it already was. He was like, you need to eat now, you need to hydrate up. And we got every two hours I was eating, every hour and a half, sending pictures, but we never filled back out to where my potential was as a heavyweight. That year, I probably should have been at the lower end of a heavyweight, and I'd had a better chance of winning. But, you know, you learn from your mistakes. I didn't – I had nothing against AJ. It was a great show, and it was a fun show. Again, my whole family was there. I didn't win, but I still won because my family got to see me on stage. So, after 2019, uh, me and AJ were still together in last year of 2020. Well, two years ago now. And uh, we did Nationals, which the one that I was telling you with Ross, and I placed third at Nationals. And then a few weeks later, we went to USA's in Phoenix, Arizona, and I placed second there. So both shows, I was I was one place away from winning my pro card. So that's – and we took this whole year off. Are you still there, Austin?
You there, Quentin? Yeah, we uh, just just a second here. There we okay, go. Buddy. Are you are you good to go? I'm good. The only thing I can see is a picture of your face. Okay, just a second here. All right. There you are. Cool. All right, we're uh, we're we're still recording. So why don't you just pick up Austin, uh, kind of where you left off, then? Okay. Okay. So I think I was talking about 2020 at nationals. So uh, I was still with AJ Sims at the time. And we placed third at nationals and then turned around a few weeks later and went to USA's and I placed second and I was a heavyweight then. So both shows, I was one spot away from winning my pro card. It was an awesome experience. Uh, we did a few things from nationals to USA's uh, as far as like sodium loading and, and not using as much sodium as in USA's. And I think that might have hurt us just a little bit. Um, so as far as that go, I took, took last year off. Uh, started my new career at Chevron last year. We were trying to get our business going as far as the gym went. Uh, and I actually swapped coaches. I went from AJ to Matt Jansen. Uh, me and AJ still keeping close contact. He's a good friend of mine. I didn't want, it was hard to leave him. It really was. And and I say leave, that's kind of horrible to say. I, I didn't just leave and just swap coaches. You know, I wanted to take another approach. But, you know, as, as the business goes, as far as the gym and the career that I have, I also coach myself. I'm not, I wouldn't say a coach, but I help others the best of my ability. I've got, you know, my business partner ready for his show. I've, I've had a few other guys place really good at some local shows and it's all about learning. So I wanted to learn a little bit more, um, not as far as just myself, but as far as coaching goes. And, and, and I know, I know the protocols when it comes to dieting, but you just learn Matt's, Matt's a great coach. AJ's a great coach. So for me, it was learning more about coaching. Um, and we had an off season plan set. Uh, so, and that's what we did. You know, AJ's a great coach. He got me in the best shape. He really brought me to the potential that I am now. If it wasn't for AJ, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. And uh, as far as placing where I have placed at these national shows, uh, AJ had a lot of faith in me. I hate that I lost, that I did leave to go to Matt. But, you know, this is, at the end of the day, this is my, my, my business, my body, how I want to approach it. And I just wanted to change it. Like I said, me and AJ are still good friends. I still comment on his stuff and DM him and just check on how he's doing. And, and he does the same with me. Uh, I think we'll always stay close friends. I didn't leave on, on bad terms. And um, it was almost like a breakup. It, you know, it was, it was hard to deal with. I mean, I talked to my wife about it. I talked to my business partner about it. And um, Matt didn't reach out to me. I reached out to him. And I just want to make that clarify. You know, Matt didn't reach out to me to, you know, sweep me up or anything like that. I just wanted to try something different. And I actually had plans on taking the year off, and I wanted a different approach with my offseason. And that's what we did. And actually, this year, I'm the biggest and leanest I've ever been. Last year, I started prep at 245, and this year, I'm about 260, 262. And uh, we still got about 28 more weeks until we get ready for USA's. So as far as that, I mean, that's, that's kind of where I sit as far as coaching and my plans for next year, or this coming year now, is uh, get ready for heavyweights. All right. So – um, I want to I want to talk about um, AJ just a little bit in terms of you know uh, when you were younger you had your uncle uh, prep you and kind of help you out. Um, mm -hmm. What did AJ because there's levels to to bodybuilding right and there's just yes, like sir. there's levels to business there's levels to life. So right. what did AJ kind of help you um, in terms of leveling up with bodybuilding training nutrition competing? Where did he kind of like take you to that next level? And then, uh, and then we'll uh, kind of move on from there. Well, you know, like you said, there is levels to this. My Uncle Johnny, he's an older guy. You know, nobody down here, it, it's fr crazy because in Mississippi and Alabama, nobody had ever hired an online coach. This was kind of a new thing for somebody to hire a new coach. You know, either it was my Uncle Johnny, an uh, Australian guy named Pete, and a pro now who AJ coaches, uh, Christian Simmons in Alabama. So once I hired AJ, there was probably five or six other people that reached out to AJ and they, their whole career changed. And it was just because there's different levels to it. Um, like I said, my uncle Johnny competed when he was younger, but they didn't know the knowledge that these other coaches know. They, I mean, AJ has been around Jay Cutler. He's been around all these pros. He's coached pros. He's turned people pro. The, when it comes to nutrition and off season and health phases, you know, making sure your health's in check. Not that I was unhealthy, but digestive-wise, that was a huge thing for me. I never thought, oh, man, I need to take these digestive enzymes. I need to take these probiotics. 
I need to take this morning drink every morning. I need to make sure I drink on the water. I need to make sure I have the right supplements in play for all these health, all these other things that I'm doing to make sure I'm healthy, taking, getting blood work done, doing full blood panels. But this was something later in my career that I learned with AJ. You know, we didn't talk about that. And I learned a lot through YouTube and listening to different people talk as these podcasts are getting bigger when I was younger. And I knew what I knew, but, you know, as far as levels, that's that was the biggest thing. It was making sure you're taking your off-season serious. And, and again, I was 14 at the time. We're talking 8th, eight, ninth, 10th eight, grade. I didn't know anything about off-season. I mean, I ate what I wanted. You know, and I, even into my senior year, I started playing football, and then I graduated, and I was still working. Yeah, I would do a, um, a 80-20 off-season, eat four or five times a day. But once I got on that national level, and when I say AJ put me where I, where I think I'm in a great position now, is like, basically showing me that I had the potential to be a good pro or become a pro and then become a good pro, right? So now it's almost like I got to do these things to be where I want to be. I can't slip up. I can't just let my genetics take over and turn me pro. Uh, and he pushed that to me. You know, you got to take this offseason serious. You got to train hard. And when it comes to prep, there ain't no cheating. You got to do your cardio. And that was the hardest thing for me was I didn't cheat then. It was just like I never had an offseason. So as far as swapping with my Uncle Johnny, it was fun having him as, like, my mentor and my coach. But having a, actually paying a coach, now I need to take it serious because now this money's coming out of my pocket. And now he's my coach, and I have to do what he has to say. So it went from being, like, my uncle, my mentor, to actually having a coach that I paid for. And it's kind of been like that now. You know, if I'm going to pay somebody, I'm going to do it all out. And that's that was the biggest change going from my uncle to A.J. Sims. Excellent. So this is something I, I don't know if I've ever uh, had this conversation with one of my guests yet, but I think this is very valuable, uh, Austin, for um, anybody that's listening, especially maybe some of the, the younger listeners. So you, you, you hire a coach. Um, AJ Sims is, is, is a legit coach. Matt Jansen is a legit coach. Now, you said when you kind of went from AJ to Matt, it was, it was, like, a, it was like a breakup, right? Like it was, it was hard because, I mean, this is somebody that's, uh, you know, mentored you, poured into you, helped you, you know, reach some very high levels in terms of national bodybuilding. Um, talk to myself, talk to the listeners, talk to maybe some of the younger listeners that are in this position or are going to be in this position at some point. How do you professionally, you know, go from one coach to another coach so that you still are on good terms so it isn't, you know, some social media blow up, something, you know, just ridiculous, some drama stuff. Um, so that both of you walk away saying, hey, you know what? I've got respect for Austin. Hey, I've got respect for AJ or this coach or that coach. How do you go about that professionally? T tell us about that, please. Well, I mean, you know, the biggest thing is like, you know, me and AJ had our time together. I think that's the biggest thing. People freak out when they're doing these coach swap. It's like, oh, well, I didn't get my pro card. Now I'm going to swap coaches. Well, I could have did that four years ago with AJ. I, I stayed with him for five years. And it was almost, you know, when I did do it, it was hard. I mean, I could send you the messages, but it was hard to say, hey, I'm ready to swap coaches. You go from one great coach to another, it's like, well, why are you making that swap? Um, I think me and AJ had that relationship where I could pick up the phone and call AJ. I went to his house. I met, I met his wife. I sent him Christmas presents. I mean, we just had a really good relationship. And I just – I didn't met, I messaged Matt before prior to saying, uh, you know, AJ, I think I want to swap just to see where Matt was with it. And I told Matt, I said, look, man, I said, I haven't told AJ this yet. I wanted to make sure you was going to take me on as a client first, just to clarify, Matt never met, messaged me first. I messaged Matt. This was, a, this took me over two weeks to like, make sure that's what I want to do before I messaged Matt, before I messaged AJ. And after I still had to think about it, I said, well, look, don't say nothing. I, and, I, and I've talked to Matt several times. I felt like I could trust him and saying, hey, don't say anything. I'm not no big time Mr. Olympia or top five. I knew it wasn't going to be a big deal. I'm still an amateur, you know. So I told Matt, I said, look, I haven't told AJ. Let me, let me, let me make sure this is what I want to do. And that's when I kind of stepped back. I thought about it. Like I said, I talked to the people that are close to my corner. And I messaged AJ and I told him, I said, look, man, I, I've loved everything we've done. And I, and I told him, just like I told you, you know, I think you brought me to the position I want and I'm ready to, I'm ready to grow into another form of a bodybuilder as far as coaching goes, as far as just learning new things. And I think AJ could have, AJ, we could have turned pro last year. And I, and I have belief that I could have turned pro with AJ last year. Um, 
but I was ready to make somebody give somebody else a chance and learn something new. And I told AJ exactly how it went, how I felt about it. And it was very respectful, his message that message back. And like I said, we've talked since then, and it's and I'm glad it's like that. I would never cut anybody off, not give them give them their praise of what they did, and I would never just cut somebody off and, and not tell them exactly how I was feeling. I'm just not made like that. Uh, I would feel horrible. And like I said, AJ's a true friend of mine. His wife's super nice. They've been they've met all my family, and I'm just I'm not built that way. If I if I if I don't want to do something, I'll tell you why. This is I'm just going to be up front with you, you know, and that's how it went. And uh, I think he respected me for it, and he said he would always have my back if I ever needed to come forward to him for anything. He would be there, and and it's the same the same way on my side, you know. If he needs something or anything like that, you know, he's just he's a super nice guy, and I didn't want to end things like that. And as far as the young listeners, give a coach a chance to learn you. Um, you know, health is important. So if they're not worried about your health, I would tell you don't use them as a coach. That was the first thing AJ wanted was, hey, how's your health? Let's get a blood panel. He knew that I, I've taken gear before. I was at the age that I'd already done that. Matt was the same way. If these coaches don't care about your health. All they're wanting is a paycheck. So that's the first thing I would look for is making sure, hey, what are we going to do health-wise? Do you need a blood panel? Uh, you know, what, what are you taking? What have you previously taken? Are you allergic to anything? That is the first number one thing you'll find with a coach. If they care about you, they care about your health. And also give that coach time. Don't be – you know, people say this all the time. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And it is. I've been competing since I was 14. I'm still not a pro yet. And I get it. I'm fine with that. I love competing. If I would have turned last year, if I would turned pro the year before, I still wouldn't be a great pro. I want to be a great pro. When I turn pro, I want to be a great pro. So as far as that goes, don't be scared if you don't turn pro or you don't get the placings you want. This whole peak week and diet, you know, it, it takes a long time for a coach to learn somebody's body. And AJ knew mine. He knew it didn't take long to carve up. He knew it didn't take that many carbs. He knew I had to push my body and do two and a half hours of cardio to get where I needed. You know, so give the guys a chance or women, even, you know, of course, my wife's a bikini competitor. She's been with two coaches since she's turned pro. Uh, give these coaches a time to learn your body. Make sure you have a good connection. And I think a lot of people want more of a friendship than a coach. They're not there to be your friend. They're there to be your coach. They don't want to talk to you every day. You know, if you have that relationship, you can have it. But don't blow these coaches up. Don't mess up what you got going with them. They're not there to have a friendship. You might build a relationship and become a friend, but as a coach out the gate, they're your coach. They tell you what to do. You do it, do your check-ins, and that's it. Give these coaches time to learn you, learn your body, and 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 it'll go where it needs to go when it needs to be there. Excellent. So what was your uh, what was the uh, pull to uh, reach out to Matt then and decide to go with him? Obviously, there's – thousands if not millions of coaches out there and we obviously know Matt's uh, track record and that's very appealing I'm sure but why, why did you yeah. make that decision to reach out to him and why did you want him to coach you um man you know of course his track work record shows you know I was a big fan of Dallas McCarver uh I liked their training style I liked how biggest thing that sticks out to me with Matt is his training I love to train I'd follow all his – I actually had his app of his Matt Jansen – or Camp Jansen's training app. I love the way he gives back to his people, his the, his clients or people that he's trying to mentor. Uh, but his training thing, when I when I watched all his workouts with Dallas, it was all heavy, progressive overload and just push, 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 push. But he also would take a step back if they needed a rest day, you know. And, and he listened to Dallas. And when they did all those videos of Dallas, man, it was almost like you knew Dallas and you knew Matt Jansen watching all those videos. And when he passed away – I remember I was sitting at work and man, it, it like tore me up. Cause I was like, I feel like I had a relationship with Dallas through those. Cause I watched every one of his videos, whether it was YouTube or Instagram or his competition and with Matt. And uh, like I said, when me and Matt did USA's together, of course I didn't ask him to think about Dallas, but we talked and every, every time we seen each other, we had a good conversation. Uh, so as far as that goes and also all season, his all season, there is no, just okay I'm in off season now I'm in prep and this it's it's all year round uh AJ did send me diets where as far as off season goes I think I think Matt is more in more on key with that like if you're checking in with him in off season it's just like checking in on prep with AJ it was a little hit or miss and that was on me it wasn't totally on AJ I have my own things going on so it was more of the off season approach and this is what we have to do to get there this is this is the goal that we have and this is where we need to get so with Matt, it was already had a relationship with him. We had talked several times, several occasions. 
I like this track record, obviously, with Dallas and and uh, and Nick Walker. Me and Nick Walker stay in contact pretty pretty reasonable time. So and then it, and then it went into the off season, off season approach, you know. And and another thing with Matt, he's huge. I mean, he owns his own health business, so that was a huge thing for me. So I knew we went as far as gear protocol, we weren't going to push that to the the limit without knowing if we did, which I knew we didn't. We'd already talked about that. I'm not big on that. Uh, I knew health was number one, and it has been. Even hell, he messaged me a few weeks ago. Hey, I want you to go get uh, your blood work done. Want you to go get blood before we do we do, before we start prep this year. We had just did it six months ago before we started our off season, before we started together. So he's huge on that. I sent him my blood work. He says, "Hey, this looks good. Let's run with it." You know, so those big things that was that was huge on me to make my transition with Matt. Uh, and like I said, I met him several times. He's a real down to earth guy. Uh, and I think highly of it, you know, and I think, uh, and again, I'm, I'm with Matt now and I'll be with Matt for a long time, as long as everything goes well, just like I did with AJ, I'm not going to flip flop. Oh, well, even if I don't turn pro this year, or if I don't do as good, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, I should go back to AJ because he, he can do better. No, I'm going to do the same thing. Like I told the young listeners, stick with a coach, let them learn your body, have a relationship with them and do what you can with them. Excellent, man. So, uh, talk to us about Austin, the decision to take, uh, the entirety of 2021 off. And then I think you already mentioned USA's in 2022, but talk a little bit more about um, what, what the future is in terms of competition. Yeah, so I took last year, like I said, with the business starting, uh, I started that new career with Chevron. I was with a chemical plant before, uh, but Chevron's big on test taking and the way you move up and progress and all these different things with Chevron, we won't get on that. But it's it's a huge company, so it was a huge it was a huge thing that I was taking on. There's a lot of training involved that goes into working at an oil refinery, uh, being that safety's huge out there. I mean, if something blows up out there, it could level all of Pascal if 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 that was necessary or if it happened, you know. So with that, and then me and Billy starting our own business, it was a lot on my plate. Uh, and then again, swapping coaches. Um, so. And I talked to Matt, and I was like, man, I really want to do nationals, but what do you think? I got a lot going on. I can do an offseason now. What if we just take this year off? I've never taken a year off. I've competed, you know, from, I guess, 2018 all the way up from Junior USA's till now, till last year. I said, what do you think about just taking the year off and uh, taking this time to grow? You learn my body through this offseason, and then next year we do a show. And he also had competitors doing nationals that I wanted to do, uh, Justin that won the U.S. or won Nationals heavyweight. And I don't think – Justin had already started with Matt, and I don't think – I don't think Justin wanted me and him doing the same class together because there could have been some controversy. Well, if he won and I didn't, uh, me personally would have had no controversy with me because if he would have won, I'd have been just as happy if I would have won or lost. Uh, so I knew he had all his eggs in the basket with him and then Matt. I think he had a few other competitors in that show. He had a lot going on. So I think it was – well, he had this going on. I had a, you know, he had all these competitors going on in that show already. I had my, all my business things and career going. I said, well, let's just take the year off and we'll start next year. And that's what we did. And uh, I think it was a good thing. Uh, we'll actually start prep in my gym and Billy will start his prep in his gym, you know, so it's pretty cool to have your own gym in a brand new facility, have starting prep on Arsenal equipment. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, like I said, with the career that I started, you know, it was a lot on my plate. So I think this year, USA, that'll be the show I'll do. And I'll come back in, hopefully, as a heavyweight. We should be able to suck back down to that 225 cutoff. And we'll see where things go. And, you know, Matt's huge on rebounding. So we'll see what happens at, at USA's, and we'll go from there. Um, so talk to me a little bit more about uh, your, your training philosophy, your training style. Uh, maybe give us your, your current split. I know some yeah. of the listeners uh, uh, enjoy hearing a little bit about that. So when I started with Matt, uh, we talked about my training and it was way too much volume. Um, I went back and forth from progressive overload and like he likes to train to just more volume, more sets. Um, you know, when I started training, I would do four sets of eight to 12, everything I did. That's all I knew back in middle school. But learning new things um, and new training styles, uh, I was just doing more of a higher volume. You know, I throw a little bit of progressive overload as far as, okay, I did this weight here this week. Let's try to progress and get more. But I was still doing a lot of sets through before I met uh, before I met Matt or started with Matt Jansen. 
And uh, once we started, he sent me a split. Man, I fell in love with it. Me and actually my buddy Billy. Billy's 56, and he loves it. You know, normally an older guy wouldn't want to do progressive overload style training. But, man, we go in there and we tear it up. Uh, so today's Monday. So we'll do some back and uh, some biceps, and then we'll take Tuesday off. Wednesday's hamstrings. And then Thursday we go in and do chest, a little bit of upper back and triceps. And then Friday we take off, come back Saturday and do quads. And then come back Sunday and do shoulders, uh, and that's that's how our split goes. And it's just enough where you pretty much push your your whole body for one day, take a take a day off. You push your legs, your and your chest one day, take a day off. Then it's quad day and then shoulder day. So your body really gets a a good time break. I've never just trained five days a week. I knew that was something big that I wanted to do in my off season. Just train five days a week because before I was training six days a week, sometimes seven. Um, I even tried Matt's uh, workout plan that he had with Dallas, where he was basically train every body part two days a week and take one day off, and that was terrible. Uh, I thought I was having fun, but AJ was like, no, we got to pull the reins back. This is when I started with, with AJ. So, man, this is way too much training. But, again, I love training, and I felt like I was young and I needed to grow, and that was a thing. But, man, it's, it's not all about spending two and three hours in the gym. You know, you have to get your rest. you got to get your recovery. And you got to get the food in. That's that's – that's it. Go in there and train hard for an hour to an hour and a half. Push your body, balls to the wall. Make sure you're making progress. Be smart with it. Make sure with the weight that you're using, you're keeping it under control. Make sure you're warming up good, stretching in between sets and your warm-up sets. I mean, it's not all about spending three and four hours in the gym. If you want to spend three or four hours in the gym, bring your post-workout shake, your post-workout meal, do your workout, get it in, hang out, talk to the buddies or whatever. That's how you spend three or four hours in the gym. But – Going back in the gym and spending three hours, no, nah, I'm not doing that. You know, when we start prep, if we need to go up to six days a week, we will. But this five-day split has been awesome, and I love it. And we we actually started progressive over over girl, oh, sorry, progressive over style training a couple of years ago. But with my swing shift, it was hard because on nights, man, I feel like I'm fogged up. You know, I get off at five in the morning. Uh, at the time, I was working an hour away, so my 12 hours was 14-hour days. Uh, I would sleep four hours, get back up, do cardio, and try this progressive style training. And there's no way, you know, if you get four hours of sleep at night, that's 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 still horrible. But I would get off get off work at six in the morning, come home at seven, shower, get in bed, and be up again by ten or eleven. So you're getting three and a half, four hours of sleep, doing cardio in between, and then training it just didn't work out. But it was a lot of volume, even though I was progressive. There was too many sets, there were too many exercises. So Matt's really put this program in line and it's worked perfectly in this off season. I'm definitely the strongest I've been in a long time. And uh, I think we'll stick with this until we need to change things up. And I'll let Matt handle that part of it. So uh, Austin, what are like some of the body parts that you're really concentrating on or focusing on in terms of uh, bringing up or balancing out? Uh, you know, again, I, I, I've heard it from the judges. I'm, I'm a bubbly guy. I'm, I got full all the time. Uh, but I know I got to bring my legs up. My upper body looks good. Uh, you know, there's everything can come up. You know, if I want to be a pro body, but everything can come up. There's not just one thing. It all has to come up. Uh, but I know for a fact I need to bring my legs up some more. Uh, they look good. They need some deeper lines in them. They got great shape, in my opinion. Uh, my back could come up. My lower lats could come out. They're there. They just need more development. Uh, and I think this all goes back to – even in the previous years, I never had a real off season. You know, this is a true off season as far as nutrition and training goes. Never, never have I've, I've never done an off season like that. You know, it's always okay. Let me do this rebound phase for eight or six weeks, and then I'll start off season. Then it, then something else would come up, and it was just I was I was never consistent. And that is the key with bodybuilding. It's not just on prep. You got to be consistent after. If you really want to do this, you want to earn your pro card. You got to be consistent. And this has been the first year that I can say. Last year was a good year. Last year we gained about 16 pounds of muscle uh, coming from up from that light heavy weight uh, spot to being 223 previous year at Nationals. So, I mean, we put on 16 pounds of muscle. So, and that was a good year to have. We had a good rebound phase, and that's what I plan on doing this year. I think we put on another eight or 10 pounds, and I, I shouldn't have any issues as far as fullness in the legs or in the back. And that was the issues that I think I needed to bring up. You know, when we did Nationals, if you go back 2020 nationals or yeah, 2020s nationals, they had us up there for seven and a half minutes posing, literally seven and a half minutes. It was between me, Ross and Justin. Uh, and it was, it was 
it was crazy. And that was the one thing that I got to knock was like, man, when you came out, we thought you were going to win the show. But my legs faded. And I think that just comes from it, maybe a few directs. So we, we took like our Dactone or whatever. But also, I wasn't prepared to pose that long. I'd practice posing. Uh, but even though those guys still uh, had way bigger legs than I did at the time, and that was one of the things that I need to bring up, and I think I have. Uh, again, I had a I had a slight tear in my PCL uh, last year, but it's something I didn't have to have surgery on. It took me out for a few weeks, but it, it got better, and it hadn't uh, caused any issues this year. So, uh, man, we've been in full swing of things and legs like – and I don't know if I could – but we're training legs twice a week, splitting up hamstrings and then quads. I don't think I could do quads and hamstrings together. So splitting them up like Matt has it has worked out perfect. Love it, man. So um, what is it, Austin, about bodybuilding that um, just creates that passion inside of you? And it's just like, man, I, I love this. I'm going to pursue this. I'm going to keep going with this. What is it about bodybuilding that, that just really pulls you in and, and keeps you there? Well, I think I've already touched on it once, and I'll say it again, it's family. I mean, from the first time on my show here, my dad screamed my name, having my family and friends there. I love competing. I love working out. But when I know my family's there to support me, it's, man, it's, it's surreal. I mean, it really is. I mean, I love the stage. I love competing. I love the whole eating. I'm always hungry. I love to eat. So, like, that's not an issue. But as I'm bodybuilding's there. It's my family. You know what I mean? My coach is my family. When he's there supporting me, he's my family. But when my family shows up, man, you you know it. I mean, they're screaming my name back behind, in front of the stage or whatever. And it's, you don't get no better feeling than that. I, I can't – I wouldn't bodybuild if I didn't have my support system. There's no way. I wouldn't do it. Uh, and, you know, I, I told Billy this and I told my wife this other day. When I'm training, I'm thinking of my family. Uh, because I told myself this year, I won't lose again. I won't, I won't bring my family to – Vegas, if that's <clears throat> if that's where it's going to be at, I won't not come home with a pro card. That's my goal, and that's that's what I'm going to do. And when I'm training, and when I'm eating my six meals, and having stuff my face, that's what I think of. I think of I'm not going to lose again. I'm not bringing my family there out again and not winning. I'm not losing again. You know, this is this is this is my year. I was one spot away last year at two shows. This is my year to win. And whoever's coming to USA's, y'all better bring y'all y'all's lunch, y'all's breakfast, your luggage, your family, because I'm taking my pro card. <laughs> excellent man excellent so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up the conversation here in a couple more minutes uh, austin you've brought up your wife uh quite a few times you said she's a ifbb uh bikini pro and uh obviously just talking about family how did you guys meet and what does she mean to you in terms of uh life and uh bodybuilding man she's my everything she's my motivation we actually met in the gym uh, it's crazy that it sounds like I said, family goes back to gym. I mean, this is this is what I love. This is what I did. Uh, I met her dad in the gym, Mike, uh, which is my father-in-law now. We met in the gym. He was a big old Jack Mexican gorilla, you know, just like me. So it's kind of, you know, they say you'll marry somebody similar to your dad, and that's that's kind of what happened. I mean, we're just – we're the same. You know, when it comes to gym or looks or face expressions, it's kind of funny. But we met in the gym. Uh, actually, when I first started, the first gym that me and her ever trained at, um, and we we met, but you know, you always have that little buddy that you think he's your buddy, your friend, but he can maybe push what you want out of your way so he could get it. Well, that's kind of what he was trying to do, and we're not friends anymore. Uh, he was trying to <laughs> he was trying to get her out of my view, say some bad things about me that wasn't true. Um, and when I came home from college. She was still training, and she knew that I was coming home and I was personal training. And my mom does hair, and she was cutting my mom's hair. I mean, my mom was cutting her hair, and she heard that I was coming back in town, and she wanted me to be her trainer. And it went from there. And, man, you should have – I've been – and the crazy part about it, I tell the story all the time to friends that don't know the backstory of it, was I was trying to talk to Alyssa back in middle school, which she's a year older than me, but – um she would never give me the opportunity because I had that friend that was just in the blind spot. He wouldn't let me, he wouldn't let me talk to her, you know? So when she asked me to be her trainer, I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, I was, <laughs> man, this is awesome. Hell yeah. I'll be a trainer. And of course it was never nothing besides that. I was just happy that I finally got to talk to her and hang out with her at the gym. And uh, it just went from there. We got to talking and become her trainer and this and that. And then about a year after that, I asked her on a date and it went from there. We actually went to a bodybuilding show. We actually went to, 
the first bodybuilding show that I went to, Pensacola, Panhandle Showdown. So it all revolves around family and bodybuilding. That's why I love this. And uh, we got married, and, man, it's she's my everything. Her family's my everything. Uh, you know, you just – when I lost my dad, there was a there was a spot in my heart that needed to be filled up, and she fills that spot. My dad was my everything, you know. Everything I did was for my dad, and you know I wanted to. He was my motivation, you know. I just wanted to make him happy in everything I did. So when I lost that, I mean, yeah, I had my family, but they had their own family, you know. I felt like when I lost my dad, I lost I lost a piece of me, and she filled that gap, man. And that's just man, it, everything I do is for my for her. You know, everything as far as bodybuilding goes, career goes, everything's just to motivate her and just, I mean, she's just, she's my everything, you know, so. Beautiful, man. So um, what, uh, in terms of bodybuilding, when you have an opportunity or when you take the opportunity to think about your, your future in bodybuilding, Austin, I know you're focused on getting your pro card. That's the first step. But um, how far would you like to take? Uh, this bodybuilding experience, how far would you like to go with bodybuilding? Oh, this is it. I mean, this, you know, I want my pro card, but I want more after that. Like I spoke before, Matt's huge on rebounding. I would love to win my pro card and do a show with my wife as a pro. Uh, and then we'll have kids, of course, after that. But she knows and she wants me to still compete. I mean, I want to be the best, one of the best bodybuilders that's ever been up there. You know, there's Dorian Yates behind you. You know, I, I don't know if I can get to that level, but you don't know until you push yourself. So my, my goal is to be the best pro bodybuilder when I turn pro that I possibly can be. I want to win a pro show. I want to step on that Olympia stage. I want to see who, who who's better than me, you know, and I, and I know there's a long road to get there, but now I'm 28 years old. I still got plenty of time. Um, I feel like I have great potential in this sport. Uh, I've came up short, but I won't come up short again. Next year I'll turn this year. I'll turn pro and hopefully do a pro show this year or early part of next year. And then, you know, like I said, Matt's huge on rebound. He's huge on off season, and I think he can he can get me where I need to be. And we've talked about it. The goal is to get to that Olympia stage, and I think we can do it. You know, uh, own him on gym, have him on career, uh, having the family support that I have, having the genetics that I have, having the shape and structure that I have. I'll turn pro, and then I'll become a great pro, and that's my goal. Love it, man. So uh, I'm going to ask you this, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, what's something um, and, and, and you can answer life, bodybuilding, both you, you, uh, you do you, but, um, what's something now at, at 28 years old, uh, that, you know, or you've kind of discovered or found out that you wish you would have known maybe five, 10 years ago, life, bodybuilding, both you take it however you want, Austin. That's a good question. I mean, uh, as far as, you know, my dad losing him, I mean, my, my life experience was, was kind of hard at first. Um, and I didn't know which way I wanted to go. But you got to find something that you love to do to find the people that you could connect with, and that has been bodybuilding. Uh, that's how I met my wife. That's how I met my best friend. Uh, so there's really nothing I, I'd want to go back and change. You know, of course, if I could change my dad not dying, yeah, but we don't have any control of that. Uh, there's nothing that I've done that I've regretted in my life, uh, as far as bodybuilding goes uh, or life, you know, you just, you live day by day. You can't control anything. Um, you know, so there's really nothing I would want to change. I, I'm here to live now and continue living the dream that I want to live around the people that I want to be around that love what I love, love them and just keep day by day. Um, yeah, everybody makes mistakes in life, you know, and, and you gotta, you gotta, get better from those mistakes, learn from them. Uh, and, I, and I've made my mistakes like everybody. Nobody's perfect. But, man, I, I live my day, day by day, meet my goals, and keep on moving. Perfect, man. All right, Austin. So um, we're going to close it out. I want to give you the opportunity to kind of share any final thoughts or any final words that you have for myself and, and the listeners, the viewers. Um, and uh, if, if, if you want to shout out any sponsors, um, any any individuals, anything like that, uh, the platform is yours. Well, thank you. The first thing I would like to say is thank you for letting me be on my first podcast. I am a follower, I am a subscriber, and it was pretty cool to be on here. Uh, I've been wanting to do one for a long time, but obviously got to get invited. I'm not huge on social media, so nobody really knows me. So this was kind of my outlet to say who I am, my, my name, my person, 
who I am, the purpose that I have for bodybuilding in my life. And I just want to thank you for that. I wouldn't be able to do that without you inviting me. And it's been an awesome experience. And I hope we get to do some more soon. Uh, as far as sponsors go, yes, I am a sponsored athlete through HD and Iron Rebel. Um, I've been one for the past year now. HD has been the one to help me with all my, my supplements, my health supplements, uh, my proteins, my answer, all the supplements, and then Iron Rebel with the clothes. You can use my promo code for Iron Rebel, and it's ACON, A-C-O-N-N, 10. Get you 10% off. And for ACON, A-C-O-N-N, for HD. Um, as far as gyms, if you're ever on the coast on Mississippi, come check us out. Mississippi Muscle, we do have Instagram. We'll start posting some more pictures on there. Uh, just come in, check us out. We'll have day passes and stuff. If you're here longer than that, you can come check us out there. Um, man, that's that's about it. Like I said, hopefully we can do another podcast soon. Maybe we want to start prep or something. Talk about how the gym's going and how prep's going. And uh, maybe once I win my pro card, maybe it'll be the first podcast I'll jump on and congratulate me and we'll we'll move on. And what's what's the head of that after winning my pro card? So thank you a lot, Quentin. You're you're very welcome, Austin. And for sure, man, I uh, for nationals, I brought on uh, a few guys uh, before nationals and then after nationals. That's something that I'm definitely going to continue to do with, uh, you know, these national level shows is I want to kind of give you guys a platform, a spotlight, um, especially you guys that maybe don't have the social media following or yeah. or, or getting all the hype going in. Um, that's definitely uh, something that that. Uh, I uh, am going to continue to do so once we kind of get closer to USA's, I'll bring you back on. Once you win your pro card, I'll bring you back on again, man. And we'll, uh, we'll just kind of continue to follow along your bodybuilding experience. Okay, Austin. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, you're, you're very welcome. And then before I close this out, Austin, why don't you give everybody your personal Instagram handle, please? Yeah, let me, uh, let me pull it up. Cause actually I don't even know. I think it's a Conley. Oh, uh... Yeah, it's Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N, underscore Conley, C-O-N-N-E-L-Y. And Mississippi Muscle is the same way, Mississippi Muscle. It's Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 -I -I underscore Muscle, M-U-S-C-L-E. Go check us out. Follow us on Instagram and follow my page. Uh, we'll be posting more about the gym. We'll be posting more about what's coming up uh, as far as the gym goes, when we're opening, and as far as my Instagram, what's going on in my daily life. So you can definitely check us out there. Thank you, Quentin. Absolutely. All right. All of you who are uh, tuning in to another episode of Behind the Muscle, once again, I just want to say thank you to you. If it wasn't for you guys, uh, the podcast wouldn't exist. I greatly appreciate all of you guys who have subscribed to the YouTube channel, all of you who are following on Instagram and are just on this uh, journey with myself, all the guests that are uh, coming on to Behind the Muscle podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. That's very important because I release all of these episodes first on YouTube, and then I distribute them to the other podcast platforms. So if you want to stay on top of all the episodes current, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. And then one uh, final last favor I would ask of all of you, please take this episode with Austin Share it on your Instagram stories. Make sure you tag Austin and tag Behind the Muscle. That's just a great way for Austin and I to know that you listen to this episode specifically. You found great value in it. It's also a great way for more people to find the podcast, more people listen, and more people are going to be positively impacted through Austin's story and other guest stories. So make sure you share this episode on your Instagram stories. Again, tag Austin, tag behind the muscle. And finally, I will leave you all with this. Remember, behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later.